my grandpa on on the mom's side on my mom's side he was a painter so i just remember when i was growing up like watching him painting he did like big landscape uh, like um, pagodas or like beach scenes uh in vietnam and he have like this huge painting in his house so i always like watching him making it and like really like excited and fascinating to see him make, like bring that sense to life i was always like crafty a crafty person growing up like making clothes or my dolls or making stuff from lego legos and things like that yeah i think that's the oldest yeah i i, I drew in pastels over the back of a blueprint of my dad's a portrait of my mom for mother's day that's like my earliest like remembrance of when i really tried to like achieve something that was i don't know kind of realistic or something it was uh 1997 so i was six years old yeah the memories that i remember is like my during diwali festival my mem my mom would make rangolis uh, at the doorstep. It's supposed to bring good luck, yeah, and stop evil from entering the house. So I would help her and then even I started making those rangolis. It's basically made from colored sand. So I think that is how everything started. That is my introduction to art, so to say, because it's made of geometric patterns, uh, very colorful, and then if you're good at it, then you make like landscapes and then portraiture. So I think I started like not too long ago, but yeah, so that's how I started. And then I started making portraits in Rangoli uh, before actually I started painting. So, yeah. The earliest thing that I drew and the earliest thing that I was interested in was the Volkswagen Beetle. And to this day, I still love that car. When did I decide that I want to be an artist? Uh, probably around the ages of eight and 10. And that was probably on a Sunday in the middle of liturgy and staring at, you know, paintings of saints. I'm pretty sure that that was the, was the starting point. Well, I have distant relatives in Italy who have a, they have a drawing of mine from when I was three. And they said that when I was three, I seemed like I wanted to do this. So, <laughs> so I, I think when I was three. <laughs> but um, the, when, I, when I made the decision to be very serious about it, I was nine, actually. That was when I was like, I need to do this. I was, um, I was a child actor in Hollywood. And I was, a, I, was, I, was an extra, like I was an extra for a lot of films. And I was in like commercials and stuff, nothing big. But I was on, um, I was in the movie Magnolia with Tom Cruise and he had like pulled me aside and he gave me a piece of gum and we were, we were talking off set and uh, my mom was furious that I was choosing, chewing on the gum because she was like, you should have kept it as a souvenir. But uh, after I, I was an extra on that film, I told my parents that I want to quit acting because it's distracting me from being an artist. So I think that was the, like, the moment when I, I said, like, no, no distractions, I just want to do this. Well, I wanted to paint and draw, draw and paint, but I don't know what it is to be an artist. I don't have any example around me. Well, uh, my grandpa, uh, but he's not really like um, a painter painter. He went to school for to be a painter, but he ended up doing like more advertising works. Um, so I don't, I didn't really know what it is a painter, but I just know that I like to draw and paint. And um, so um, I didn't even keep that hobby growing up. Um, I was kind of carried away with. School. Um, things at school, study like science, math, 
physics to get into college like all of my friend did at that time so um, after I did all that finished my bachelor in economics at my last year senior years like you all always have that freak out when you're about to finish a, um, a degree or something a, a program what am I gonna do with my life? Oh my god, I, I cannot imagine. I, I will go to the office every day and sit on the decks working nine to five. I don't feel like I I fit into that lifestyle at all. So I'm just thinking, you know, like, oh, like I always want to draw, but I always afraid to do it to do it because I don't know whether it will work out, whether whether I will get enough money to support myself. So. Um, I still come back to Vietnam and work for like two years, but I hated my job. I hated so much. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, if I don't do it now, there will be never a chance anymore. So I decided I, um, I take some part-time art class and come here to become an artist. I guess now I don't have any backup plan anymore. Just the only way that I can go. Yeah, I mean, I always knew that I wanted to make something, I wanted to create things. But now I'm like, yeah, I have to work harder. It's not just like a hobby art, you know. I want to really think uh, think deeply about the subjects that I'm painting. Also make it like, um, not like super serious, you know, because it's like you create and then something will come out of that creation through the process, not like, you know, everything cannot be planned, otherwise you lose the magic, I feel. so. I think it's just I'm gonna keep creating and I'm gonna do it not earlier when I started it was like oh I want to paint my family I want to it started very really with a very naive objective I just want to learn how to paint and I'm gonna paint my family but uh, yeah, but yeah. More like a yeah I, I, more I got more serious project. last year but we'll see how it goes Right now, it's like looking down, dim your eyes. Yeah, I, I, I really like that. Not looking straight at the viewer. I like a head that's in a, in a three-quarter position from where I'm standing and slightly tilted down. Because I think there's just something nice and tender and disarming about that. So I always kind of find myself in that spot the person in there. I think everyone's favorite is three quarters with a little bit of perspective, maybe on the horse three quarters. That's the one that I normally check on. But sometimes I want something new. Something new I do the one that passed the profile where you can see just a little bit of the nose and a lot of the back of the head and the glowing ear. I, I normally really like it when you don't see the face in the portrait. <laughs> Lately I've just been really going for like pretty much frontal but then there's like that like slight uh, three-quarter to it where you, you just know that it's barely three-quarter because I, I, I don't know I just feel like when it's two three-quarter it's just not giving you that person, so. My, my wife and kids, I think that's, you know, that's gotta be done, that's gonna be done this year, you know. Uh, as a, as a, just a sign of thank you for their, their support and patience. Uh, my mother, yeah, it's, it's like, um, it's been I have I've drawn her uh, you know quite some times but after learning to paint you know in uh, at school I haven't been able to go home so once I'm home I'll yeah I would love to paint her I have a lot of pictures of my mom like from back in the day when there were like film cameras uh, you know the box cameras so there are like these tiny postcard size pictures and they have such beautiful drama of shadow and light you know because most of the things are like lost it's just light and shadows and 
yeah it's from 1970s 60s so yeah yeah i'm thinking of using them to make something well okay so i, I have a way to answer that question my wife is a blogger and she's friends with a ton a ton of bloggers and um and yeah so like whenever we're hanging out with these blogger friends i'm like oh my gosh i need to paint that <laughs> that person um i don't know why i think it's just because they're all they're all like russians and they have like a very sculptural kind of face like very angular geometric shapes and um and so i i mean i painted my wife quite a few times and uh yeah, I think Russians are very fun to paint. So I'd say that's that's the answer right there. Very dynamic. If you ever look at a Russian nose, it's like a it's like very polygon directional nose. Oh, there's one girl that in Vietnam I don't know her. Is she kind of a celebrity? I don't know. Not really really celebrity, but she have that like um, really cool lifestyle so i kind of follow her on instagram she look she have a look that really um oriental looking long straight hair um really beautiful features yeah i want to paint her portrait kind of like scared to reach out to her on instagram like i don't know is it creepy like she's a semi-famous person on Instagram and you reach out like oh I want to paint you so bad <laughs> yeah I still do it when I'm back to Vietnam mm. oh I have one that people still talk about that all the time one time uh, I think it was in Broadway class and we was making a block in i don't know who was the motor at that time but um i think it was the third day and bro we just came over to my drawing and check it and then he just said oh look at that hand you draw six fingers and i didn't believe it i'm like no you're kidding i never i, I never did it are you kidding so i counted it myself like see it's not six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh shit, it's six. <laughs> and everybody laughed. That's one. People still mention I'm the one who draws six fingers. <laughs> uh, I would say an embarrassing moment I had was that I was doing um, a cast drawing of Jacob Collins without realizing it. And like three weeks in, they're like, so why do you choose Jacob Collins? Like if I was like, you know, praising him or something <laughs> like, uh, and, and I was like, this is Jacob Collins. <laughs> oh my God, I felt kind of embarrassed. Uh, but you know, it's an homage, I guess. Then I ended up calling that drawing Collins. Uh, I put my fingerprints on, this is last year. I put my fingerprints on Ruben's wet figure painting and, you know, cause I was moving it. And I lifted my hand up and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> there it is. And I told him about it and he graciously laughed it off. So I was, I was really relieved. <laughs> Where was it on the painting? Uh, I think it was on his shoulder, you know, so it was, <laughs> so it was, you know, you know, it looked like the guy was getting, you know, getting a nice pat on the back. <laughs> Sometimes it happens like every day. There are moments uh, while painting when you feel like, yeah, this is, or, or when you're stuck and you know someone can help you and then you suddenly feel like, okay, I learned something new. So, so there are moments of triumph and there are moments of failures also every day. Yeah, it goes hand in hand. Oh yes, uh, yeah, that triumph uh, was this year. I and I think it's the painting I did of this model, Fatima. Which will probably be in the catalog. You'll see it in the catalog. <laughs> Normally I feel uh, happy 
I guess happy when at the end of the third day of blocking I did a pretty good and I can move on to do a painting for example that make me a little bit happy um, or oh wow I, I won the structure last month that one of it <laughs> get the money <laughs> money can make you happy <laughs> How do you describe or feel the sculptural quality, the three-dimensional quality of a subject in a 2D surface um, paper, the paper? Um, when I do the form, I always remember Jacob and other instructors talk about, like, just imagine you an ant crawling on that surface and Think about where are you as an ant compared to the light source. Yeah, that's what I think about when I do form. Most of the time, not all the time. <laughs> when I, in good days, <laughs> I think like that. I think of form in a very mathematical way. I don't think of it in like I don't know the the way that people usually think about it because us painters were never very interested in math I guess <laughs> but for some odd reason I'm I I'm I have like a photographic memory with math and uh, I'm pretty bad at everything else <laughs> so I just told myself I'm gonna memorize every percentage and so I I then like learned like the first 10 degrees coming out of the Terminator is uh, going to be 45% of the rate of turn and so that's already half of the whole entire form and then the first 10 degrees coming out of the light most facing plane is just 1% of the rate of turn for the whole entire form so then just thinking about those two I, I then was able to kind of say like oh if I'm turning form and I only have 1% then I am over modeling this or if I'm coming out of the Terminator and I have this much gradation and I have to get like almost half of the gradation 45 percent then I don't have enough gradation here so I'm I think of it in a very math oriented way I guess um, when it comes to rate of turn because each form has a different rate of turn of course but particularly with a sphere that's the way I think of it from what I remember and what I think it's like everything in nature like light is hitting something and everything in nature is like turning yeah nothing is sharp geometry you cannot see sharp geometry on people so when you are painting a human f and you know narrow down on a form it could be either a sphere or a cylinder or a cone shape and you just focus on what is the most light facing plane and where is the terminator and try to observe as closely as you can and yeah roll into the terminator you lose the chroma as you're approaching the terminator i guess yeah you're what is the terminator it's the terminator the, it's it's terminator is the edge um, that defines the uh, distinction between the light shape and the shadow like the area that receives the light and the area that where the light cannot reach. So that edge in between the two is a terminator. Mm, I like I like all the colors, but I think I I really like uh, uh, cat orange on my palette and cobalt blue and viridian. Yeah, to cool off and then also to warm the mixture when yeah. I'm painting flesh, yeah. I just know I use a lot of burn sienna. <laughs> that's why probably, that's why most of my figure are kind of leaning toward orange. Um, also, I just add um, cap lemon and I use it more now. Yeah. I love neutral tint. Thank you, Lucas. 
it's magic you know just you know just turns the form you know just the way you want it you know and it, and it, wor it just works blends well with the colors that you're mixing it with uh orange ochre love orange ochre um what else um, genuine uh chinese vermilion red i love that yeah maybe it's because it's expensive you know, but... neutral tint so the same as paul <laughs> i had told him about that color because i love that color it's like a lavender gray and it's very dark so it looks just like raw umber but like a purple version of it and um so i'm pretty obsessed with that color and then the other color um that i that i really like is just like red ochre um old holland sometimes it's either red ochre or chinese vermilion i switch between the two it's like whatever mood mood i'm in but uh yeah those two colors i'm always excited about um I've been doing this weird temperature thing where I'll have uh, permalba on my palette, and I'll have um, I'll have either like genuine Naples yellow light or I'll have uh, lead white, and I alternate between cool warm cool warm, uh, and I I find like it makes a little more variety in the color. I don't know. I'm just experimenting with that, I guess. I just used round synthetic brushes. Yeah. Uh, no, I used rosemary and I also used those cheap uh, brushes. Yeah. I get the, the cheap green handle Utrex and um, I, I don't wash my brushes and I just throw them out and then get buy new ones every time. <laughs> And I, when people ask me why I, I do that, I tell them that my, um, my time is more valuable than washing the brushes. It's 15 minutes a day, and if you add that up, you know, every four days, that's an hour lost. And my hour, you know, my hour is expensive. Why would I waste it on cleaning brushes? <laughs> I used to do brush dip which is uh, safflower oil mixed with clove oil. You just leave it dipped in yeah. uh, overnight. But I was like, even this takes time. So I just <laughs> sit down. <laughs> uh, I, I've been experimenting with brushes, uh, but I've been sticking with Blick, Utrecht, and Treckle. Uh, but sometimes I, I feel like you know, I'm just using one or two brushes, you know, for the entire session, you know, just, you know, not moving around, you know, once, once I have a brush in my hand, it stays there. So, eh. <laughs> I listen to podcasts, music, sometimes audiobooks. Yeah. I listen to the instructors. And they're a great band. They've changed my life. Yeah. Most of the time, music. Um, Sometimes I got bored with music. I listen to podcasts. Sometimes audiobooks. But I feel kind of hard to um, listen to audiobooks when I paint. So just sometimes, most of the time music. Oh my gosh, this is kind of an embarrassing question because I, I mainly listen to death metal. <laughs> um, yeah, but I listen to everything. I'll listen to 80s pop, like happy 80s pop, and then uh, like Bach and tango. And then out of nowhere, I'll just kind of say, okay, Let's just do this. And I put death metal on for like the next three hours. <laughs> Is coffee a snack? I think it should be. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> That's my snack. <laughs>
Well, I should talk about my favorite breakfast that everyone know. Yeah, let's hear it. Cinnamon raisin bagel. You put peanut butter on it, and then fry eggs. That what I've been having for three years. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Juicy day breakfast for me. It's all. It's definitely either Mexican food or Indian. Home food, like you know, home cooked, yeah. Comfort food. I like I like to eat spinach out of the bag, like potato chips. So I'll just like throw that in my mouth. <laughs> but but uh, you know, because of uh, pinning with lead and stuff, <laughs> I try to be a little more cautious. And um, sometimes I'll just like get the bag of like almonds or something and just like let it waterfall <laughs> into my mouth because <laughs> cause of the lead on my hands. Um, but yeah, bag of spinach all the way. I feel like my first mas masterpiece would be done when I start to figure out deeper questions like subject matter, style, what I want to say. And um, so it feels like it's a life pursuit. But at the same time, the training here is so strong that I feel like it would be happening sooner rather than later. So hopefully, um, like within the next 10 years. <laughs> that's, that's like my roundabout answer to it. Uh, maybe in six years. I don't know, maybe six years. Well, I don't know. I hope I can create one that uh, I don't. Well, first of all, I don't know what does it mean by masterpiece. So I'm just hope maybe in five years, I can make one that I'm really proud of. That I feel like I get something there. Yeah. <laughs> or masterpiece or not, let the people decide. You know. I just want to make something that makes me happy. It could be anything. It could be like a public art. It could be in someone's home. It would. It could be like at a museum. Yeah, yeah. I like uh, different forms of art and. As long as people also enjoy it, yeah, like it, it adds uh, beauty and comfort, you know, yeah, it could be anywhere. Um, I don't have a preference, uh, I, you know, I'd be pleased if my work ended up privately, you know, uh, and, I, and I feel like that that's maybe where I'm heading is just working, you know, one-on-one -on -one with clients and you know decorating their homes with family portraits is probably where I'm going. Well I don't know if a specific place but uh, at the place that as much as people can see it as possible of course right you want people to see it you don't want it to hang in one room and one people see it right it's a masterpiece everyone needs to see it the whole fucking world <laughs> Oh, but I want it to happen though. I want to be every, I want everyone to see it and then everyone fight to own it. Oh, <laughs> the battle royale. Or they'll bid on it. You know, yeah. Bid. Luckily, I've, I've been living off of selling paintings for the last eight years. And I'm looking to just continue to do that. Uh, it feels like on a monthly basis. Some I'm, sometimes I'm just kind of like, "What's going to go? Like, what's going to go down this month? Like, I have no clue what's going to pay the rent." <laughs> and uh, it's at like the lowest points that then like I sell maybe the most expensive works <laughs> when I'm like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna like not be able to eat this week," and then I sell like the most expensive painting or something. <laughs> so I, it just always works out, is what I've. I've noticed, knock on wood.
Um, but it's, it's just what I've noticed that I just, I'm going to keep putting my energy towards that and just keep trying to sell paintings. Well, for now, I'm just thinking about the next one year when I go back in Vietnam. So I would love to, I don't have a lot of traveling trip and do uh, landscape. Uh, painting more flowers. I don't know, Vietnamese flowers. I don't know what it is, but more flowers. I love painting flowers. And um, I hope I can set up a studio there and have some models over to do portraits. Yeah, that's the next year that what I'm thinking. Um, for longer future, I think I will be back to New York soon though. I like it here. Well, we're gonna you know, move the kids out to the suburbs uh, and I think I need to build my own studio, you know, and yeah, get started, get, you know, get a nice group of clients coming in. So that would probably, that would be the next step after finally leaving. I'm looking forward to jumping into the real world and seeing how it goes.